it's time to see what's growing on. Guten yardening, everybody! With all of this greenery around me, you'd be hard pressed to tell that we are in the dead of winter. I mean, it is cold outside. But inside, we have this beautiful oasis. And today, I want to give you a tour to show you just how bountiful an indoor growing space can be. As we head into this tour, I do want to take a moment and welcome all of our newest members to our community. And thank you all for your comments, your viewership. We truly appreciate you and we appreciate your time. Our goal of growing food 365 days a year, except on those leap years, is really starting to come together and we're extremely excited to show you everything that's growing in this garden. All right, let's go. Trying to decide where to start in here is a bit of a challenge, but I think we're gonna go with our raised bed. We're gonna start with our raised bed. This is our three by three raised bed that we built just a couple months ago. And we showed you in one of our recent videos some of the potatoes we have growing in here. We planted about a month ago. One of the things that I didn't focus on in that video though was that we're doing some companion planting as well. And you can see this is a bean, a pole bean plant. And we have several other pole beans in here, kind of hiding and tucked away a little bit. There's another one right there. And the pole beans have this little lattice work to climb up on. You can see it's taking advantage of it right here. It's already climbing through it. So we have some support structure for these pole beans as they grow up the side of our grow tent right here. But one of the reasons why we planted these beans with our potatoes is that is a form of companion planting. The pole beans are going to add nitrogen to the soil. They're nitrogen fixers. When our potatoes are beginning to form tubers underneath the soil, the nitrogen provided by these beans is going to assist in that development. So we should get bigger and therefore tastier potatoes as well. So just a little companion planting happening in our raised bed. Just about a week ago, we showed you some of these greens, the five greens that we said you should have in an indoor growing setup for sure. And you can see just how much growth we've already got in that week. This is our baby bok choy and the leaves on this are already ready to harvest so we can come in here and actually one of the things we're going to do when we harvest this bok choy is we're going to try harvesting just around the outside some of those outside leaves rather than going in and pulling up the entire head of bok choy and we'll see how that bok choy fares if we do it that way but look at the beautiful greens how vibrant that is this is super crisp and delicious. I can tell that already. Coming over from the bok choy, we have our Paris Island cause lettuce that we transplanted again, all of this about a week ago, and it is already a couple of inches higher than it was when it was in its containers and the leaves are growing so nicely. I'm going to show you more of this cause lettuce here in just a little bit. So you can see how much we have left still to transplant, but how much it spreads out into. And here we have our purple lady bok choy. Again, look at these vibrant colors. I think this has to be my favorite looking plant that we have growing right now. This one, another inch or so taller than it was when we looked at it last. And then some of our kale over in here. Look at that kale. This kale is, I would say about five inches tall right now. This is just a standard curly kale. But we're gonna be able to harvest from that here probably in another week or two. That'd be my guess. And then our radicchio here in the back. Our radicchio is something I'm really excited about because even though it has that bitterish taste, it just adds and complements this lettuce so nicely. So we have all the makings of an amazing salad inside this raised bed. So we've had a hay bale salad bar so far. We're gonna have container salad bars and raised bed salad bars galore. And one thing I should probably note is we're not just using the inside of this raised bed. We're using as many square inches of space as we possibly can. So all along the handrails, the top of the raised bed, we have a wide variety of plants growing in small containers. And some of them are absolutely just experiments. And so here we have some dragon fruit seeds from a Starbucks drink. We have no idea what to expect here. 
but they're growing inside here. And in this little container, we've started some California Wonder red bell peppers. Of course, these will have to be transplanted, just like a lot of the other plants that we have growing in these small containers. They'll have to be transplanted eventually, but what a great way to start them. These little juice containers, clearly food safe because they had food in them to start with. And look at how nice these look. Again, just a start, just a couple inches tall so far, but perfectly healthy. They must really love the grow lights that we have them under. Now, I'm tempted not to tell you what this is, what these seeds are. We saved these seeds from something that we did buy at the store. If you know what this is, if you can figure out what this is, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Give us a guess in the comments. Look at these leggy plants. Why on earth would I be showing you these leggy plants? These are speckled peas. You know we grow these as microgreens, but I'm showing these to you because they're special. And they're special because my youngest daughter planted these. She planted these all on her own. And yeah, they're a little bit leggy because they were kept in the dark a little too long. But how awesome is that? You know, we talk about getting the family involved, being a part of the experiment. A little container like this, a couple of seeds, and my daughter's grown her own plants. And yes, they may be leggy, but they're definitely edible. Check out this basil. I wish you could smell this basil. We're, we're really close to needing to transplant this one for sure, but the smell in here of pizza right now is outstanding. I think it's overtaken the smell of our lemon and our tangerine plants as those blossoms have faded. And then here we have the start of some of our giant white kohlrabi. This is the super schmelz kohlrabi. This is gonna grow, or can grow I should say, up to about 10 pounds at full size. But what a great place to start. Again, focusing on upcycling these containers that otherwise would go, well, into the landfill. And we can reuse them and we can get our seeds started in here. And these have only been in the container for about 10 days. It's nice when we see the germination happen. A pretty good rate of germination for the number of seeds that we put in here as well. And this little container here contains Carrington leeks. Now we just planted these, that's why you don't see anything yet. And leeks can tend to take, you know, 120, 140 days to grow to maturity. But by the time we're ready to transplant this, all of this will be in a much different state. We'll have harvested so much more. So we'll have a different space really to plant them in. That's part of that succession planting. We're prepping for what comes later on in the season. Now you should notice that we've been doing something fairly valuable here. We've been labeling our containers pretty important step that sometimes gets left out, I think. This is some curly leaf parsley. And again, with these herbs that we're growing, the smell is amazing. The health of these leaves is outstanding. Again, this growth period has only been a couple of weeks for this one. And we're seeing really nice plants. So the, again, the grow lights that we have in here, and we do have a variety of grow lights, they seem to be having a really positive impact on these plants development. These are orange compost cherry tomatoes that were planted 1227. So we're talking about two weeks, almost two weeks exactly. And these are the red cherry compost tomatoes. And when we talk about compost tomatoes, what we're referring to is the fact that we intentionally plant in our unfinished compost outside, and then we harvest the seeds. And this is what we're getting. We have a great germination rate based on how many seeds we planted and we're going to do a germination test here to show you how to do that in the near future because that's a really important thing to be doing this time of year so that you don't come to spring and find that your seeds aren't germinating but these are seeds that we collected from our compost tomatoes and we're about to have some amazing tomato plants in here we have some rapunzel tomatoes these are volunteer tomatoes as well so a lot of what we collected outside come from tomatoes that volunteered again this year. I think one of the things that's true about tomatoes is if you plant them once, in all likelihood, you're gonna get them over and over and over again. And in this case, we're talking Rapunzel tomatoes, which are absolutely fantastic. So I'm excited to see how those taste, along with our compost tomatoes. Now I've switched sides to show you one more thing planted here and sitting on our raised bed, and that is 
these speckled peas. Now you're, you're going to see more of the speckled peas because we did plant a lot. But these are the speckled peas that I planted in the video where we talked about the one kind of greens that we would absolutely want to grow. And you can see, you know, within two weeks, just how lush, how huge and tall these speckled peas are. They are absolutely grown up. You can see the peas down below. They germinated exceptionally well. It's the thick foliage here. So we're gonna be able to eat these anytime we want to. Now I'm gonna descend a little bit because you know, 32 square feet of space is a decent amount, but you wanna also take advantage of vertical gardening as well. And so we have some experimental things happening down here. This is kohlrabi root. These are kohlrabi roots from kohlrabi that we harvested right after Christmas. So we harvested this kohlrabi root, everything's been cut down and we wanna see how they develop, if they come back, if this is something that could result in new kohlrabi plants. And right next door, we have some pomegranate. These are pomegranate seeds that we've planted in here and we actually have a couple of pomegranate seeds planted, again, to see what happens with these. You know, one of the cool things about microgreens is you really don't have to always plant them in the same way. So these are some of our speckled peas that we planted in a pot, a little bit different than the containers we planted most of the other ones in. And we buried the seeds a little bit deeper to see how that would impact growth. And these are also down on the ground. So again, that idea of vertical gardening, but these are getting indirect light versus the peas that we have up here that are getting a more direct light. And what we're seeing is the color is a little less deep in terms of the green, a little less deep green, but they're still growing really nicely and healthily. The planting in here is so dense that getting back here and seeing what all is on our shelving is gonna take me a little bit to negotiate the turns, but we have a lot going on in this shelving. So I'm gonna start from the bottom. I think the bottom makes the most sense to start at. And you can see down here, we have a beautiful tray of wheatgrass growing and a second tray, a little smaller tray, growing up top. It's very full. It's at a height where we're ready to harvest it. In fact, we have multiple containers off to the side now where we've already harvested this wheatgrass. It has been a daily addition to our diet. And then our tray of the Paris Island Cots lettuce. Look at how much is still in here. It's kind of fun to look at, isn't it? The beautiful bright green. We've only transplanted, I would say, what is this? About five inches, maybe seven inches of the tray we've transplanted already. And we still have all of this left. So we're gonna transplant even more. We're waiting a little bit on this because again, that idea of pacing ourselves, we'll have a transplant now, wait a week, transplant some more. And then we're gonna get that nice big growth like we have in some of our grow bags. And you can see this is almost the exact same variety or mix that we have in our raised bed minus the radicchio. So we have our kale, multiple sets of that Paris Island cos lettuce, and there's some of this purple lady bok choy. And we have another grow bag, another grow bag right here, filled with lettuce. And still, all of this lettuce left to transplant. It's like I was saying earlier, transplanting, you know, week after transplanting, the plants here, these are the radicchio, they are so healthy. They're growing so fast. That's all it took really. So a great starting spot for them and then a nice transplanting. Now further up on our shelving, we have something that I'm not gonna talk about at all, right there. I'll just say, be on the lookout, how about that? But on the right hand side, we're experimenting growing some papaya. Some papaya that we got from an organic papaya we bought at Aldi's. Now I had to switch sides because there was no way I was gonna be able to show you all of these greens if I didn't come over here. Look at this split pea forest. You can probably see here that we're not just growing the split peas in here. We have other veggies growing too, but the split peas are at different heights because we've been eating off of this still. We have our mixture of kale, broccoli, just a mixture of greens on this side. And we have a similar mixture on this side with a little bit of Brussels sprouts, the red Brussels sprouts, among other of them in the microgreens here. 
Again, we've been eating off of this regularly. Regular consumption of these greens and they're still growing strong. If you followed our channel for any length of time, you've probably seen us do some form of a radish harvest. We absolutely love our radishes. We absolutely love our radishes for many reasons. Not the least of which is you can grow them in just about anything. This is probably an inch and a half of soil, maybe two inches of soil. And they're so quick growing. These were planted about three weeks ago. And we're probably looking at another two weeks, I would say, until we harvest them. Again, the greens are edible for these. The greens are edible for the radishes. I'll get in here nice and close, but you can see the radishes themselves developing, popping up through the soil. No bugs, so there's no insect damage. We're gonna get perfect greens. We're gonna get fantastic looking radishes. Oh, this is so exciting. And here we have some of our broccoli microgreens. These are definitely ready to be harvested. In fact, you can notice they're sort of flopping over just a little bit. We've been back here consuming them. You can see where we've cut them off. You just come in and cut them off right about soil level. They may grow a little bit afterward. If I come down here, you can see they may grow a little bit afterward, but these are not coming back. They don't form the same kind of roots that our speckled peas do. But we can come in here, we can take out one container at a time if we'd like, because that's how we have these planted, these three by five containers. We can come in, take them, cut them right across. These are so tasty. I ate these on top of a sandwich today. They made a really nice additional flavor. And these little guys, these are little bunching onions. You can see the seed, what's left of the seed on top. If I can get in nice and close. These are our bunching onions. We'll see what happens. We've never grown bunching onions before indoors. And so I think they're starting off and that's how the onions look. <laughs> it's one of those things about onions. They look so frail when they're young, but boy, do they grow up. Now, unlike the other tomatoes we're growing, this one's growing under a different color light. This has the pink and the blues. This is the light that's supposed to replicate sunlight the closest in terms of what the plants need. I'm gonna turn it back off to make it easier to see. Versus our other tomato plants, which are over here, growing under more of that white light. Now, the last thing I wanna show you on the shelving is the amaranth we're growing. If you've never tried amaranth, if you've never eaten it before, it's beets. That's what it is. You love the flavor of beets. You have got to try this amazing microgreen. Super healthy, grows up nicely. Similar height, I would say, in terms of when we harvest it to our broccoli microgreens. Really, really, really tasty. Down on the ground here, we have more of our potatoes. One of the things we noticed, and my wife and I were just talking about this yesterday, in fact, these potatoes, this is our, the one we've had planted the longest. This is the one that's about two feet tall. This potato, which is about to bloom. You can see the flowers, they're just about to open up. We're gonna try to capture that for you. But these look to be, now there's the same variety, but these are growing underneath this same light. You can see the, the light that I showed you earlier that we were growing the tomato under. These seem to be a different shade of green than the potatoes were growing in our raised bed under that white light. And they're the same variety. So I'm not sure what that means exactly in terms of the quality of the greens or the potatoes that are going to form underneath. If there'll be a difference, I guess we'll see that here in a couple months when we harvest. Now over in the corner, we have our tangerine and our lemon plant. And if you saw our video earlier on where we were showing off the blooms and just how many we had and how healthy the plants look, you might think this is a completely different plant because those blossoms, all of those blossoms are dying off and disappearing. But, and I gotta tell you, I am so excited. Take a look at what we have on a tangerine that has never, never given us fruit. Right here alone, we have five fruit coming in and they are all over. You can see them coming in, tangerines everywhere. Now I know we are not going to get this many tangerines. There's no way this plant could handle having this many growing in at once. It's not big enough, it can't handle that. But look at all this potential. 
Look at all these potential fruits. It is so amazing. Again, we had never, never grown a single tangerine on here, but this year I think is going to be our year. Now in an unexpected twist of fate, I guess you could call it, our lemon tree, which has actually given us fruit in the past, looks like it's still going to provide us with some fruit. You can see right here what happens when the blossoms go away. Down in here is where the fruit would start to form. But it looks to me as though it might not be providing as much fruit. There's another one. As much fruit as the tangerine. We did not expect that at all. But any fruit is a good fruit. And man, it's just so exciting to see the possibilities, especially on our tangerine. Now, did I save the best for last? I don't know. You're gonna have to be the judge of this one. What we have here is a grow bag that is super cool. It's a lot taller than most of the grow bags we have, but there are splits all along the outside. You can see those splits right there? where you can grow additional vegetables. You can seed them, so you're basically spreading out the top, allowing for a lot more production than just a typical grow bag. And what we have growing in here is a wide ranging mix of veggies. Again, I love that idea of an indoor winter food forest. And we've got like that micro scale food forest in here with our kale, our baby bok choy. We've got these beautiful red beans growing up the side. We thought they were bush beans. The package said they were bush beans, but I'm not so sure anymore. But you can see where that those purple beans are gonna come out here shortly. We ended up tying, you can see it right here, we ended up tying some string to go up to the top of our grow tent. So these beans had something to hold on to as they climb. Now, I accidentally broke this piece of kale, and that's not going to waste. I'm gonna eat that, there's no doubt about it. We have some lettuce growing down here, but this is just another example of how much you can fit into a small space. I'm gonna to try to do a little panoramic overview one more time so you can see just how much we have in our winter garden. How much we have in this indoor growing space, this 32 feet of indoor growing space and we are just beginning. And one of the cool things about the timing of this garden is we've just now used up a lot of the last harvest that we got of the fresh veggies from outside, the harvest from the day after Christmas. And now we have so much more in here that's ready to go. So we won't be without our fresh veggies at all. And one more thing that I haven't really stressed very much in this video, and that is to help you understand just how much fun it is to be able to come down here, just how much enjoyment we get from coming down here and seeing this progress and to know that we're going to be able to eat off of this for the winter months. We can't grow anything outside right now. It's not gonna happen here in zone five, but inside in our little oasis, in our indoor growing tent where the grow lights are strong and so are the veggies, we're having an absolute tasty blast. We hope you enjoyed our little tour. And if you did, don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe. And most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.